Wear a mask. Stay six feet apart. Avoid large gatherings. As the world awaits a safe and effective vaccine, controlling the COVID-19 pandemic hinges on widespread compliance with, but as colder weather forces people to spend more time indoors, blocking disease transmission will become more challenging than ever. At the 73rd Annual Meeting of the American Physical Society's Division of Fluid Dynamics, researchers presented a range of studies investigating the aerodynamics of infectious disease. Research early in the pandemic focused on the role played by large, fast-falling droplets produced by coughing and sneezing. However, documented super-spreader events hinted that airborne transmission of tiny particles from everyday activities may also be a dangerous route of infection. Fifty-three of sixty-one singers in Washington state, for example, became infected after a two-five-hour choir. The particles produced during yelling, they found, greatly exceed the number produced during coughing. In guinea pigs, they observed influenza can spread through contaminated dust particles. If the same is true for the SARS-CoV-2, the researchers said, then objects that release contaminated dust, like tissues, may pose a risk. They discussed results from experiments designed to measure aerosol emission from instrumentalists. Everyone was very worried about flutes early. On the other hand, instruments like clarinets and oboes, which have wet vibrating surfaces, tend to produce copious aerosols. The good news is they can be controlled. When you put a surgical mask over the bell of a clarinet or trumpet, it reduces the amount of aerosols back down to levels in a normal tone of voice. Engineers led by Ruick and he at the University of Minnesota investigated a similar risk reduction strategy in their study of the flow field in air. Although the level of aerosols produced varied by musician and instrument, they rarely traveled more than a foot away. Based on their findings, the researchers devised a pandemic-sensitive seating model for live orchestras and described where to place filters and audience members to reduce risk. While many formerly office-bound employees continue to work from home, employers are exploring ways to using two-dimensional simulations that modeled people as particles. Kelby Kramer and Gerald Wang from Carnegie Mellon University identified conditions that would help avoid crowding and jamming in confined spaces like hallways. Traveling to and from office buildings in passenger cars also poses an infection risk. If air enters and exits a room at points far away from passengers, then it may reduce the risk of transmission. In a passenger car, they said, that means strategically opening some windows and closing others. To facilitate easy implementation of the guideline, the researchers worked with chemical engineer Qasim Khan to design an app and online spreadsheet that people can use to gauge the risk of transmission in a variety of settings. Please support my channel to grow by pressing subscribe button and the bell icon. We will notify you technological news. Thank you.